Wow, and some great music coming up. But you know what? We've already had one great guest. It's now time for another great guest. This great guest, though, goes right back to the 80s when I was a kid buying music. And the songs that this band and this guy were putting out there were a sound of a generation. I'm talking about Then Jericho. And they found fame back in the late 80s uh, when they released their first album, First, which is a great album name for a first album uh, and uh, they <coughs> went on to have great success and they have teamed up with many people their follow-up album the big area uh, cemented their status as one of the greatest bands of the 80s and they've sold w- well over 100,000 copies um, of big area at the time and and they attained gold status well we'll talk about that and the fact that they're coming to Birmingham this weekend for the P- Pizza Express live event in Birmingham and I'm very pleased to say that uh, live we've got Mark Shaw from them Jerry Kogan Good afternoon, sir. Hey, hello, mate. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much. I mean, the 80s, eh? They were great, weren't they? Love the 80s. Well, from what I remember, they were fantastic. Yeah, yeah. you remember all you remember all about the 80s. You were there. I did. You it were... was lovely. Do you know what? It was a time there were so many great bands, so much creativity, Matt. Yeah. Uh, everybody was a filmmaker or they were a dancer or a musician. It was all kicking off, and everybody believed that they could do something to contribute to the great cultural mass uh, of English arts. And a lot of people did. No one was yeah. afraid. Like no, it, they were. They that's very true. No one was afraid. And after you think about it, you know, these days it's all very, it's very nice, and it's all very sensible. And it's like yeah. back then, you if you didn't have an edge and you you weren't a bit dangerous and you didn't uh, do things that were a bit crazy and push yourself out there, you didn't have a career, which is what you guys did, I guess, at the beginning. Yeah, very much so. There was no internet. Yeah. So, I mean, the only way of advertising yourself was actually doing something where you would, would notice. So you had to rely upon the press. You had to get in the press, get yourself on radio. Um, and basically, yeah. I mean, having a, having a wobbly haircut was quite important. So people noticed, yeah. Uh, well, I'll you look a bit like Morton from... Harkett from a half day on some of the images I've seen. Would that be Thank fair? you very much indeed. Yeah, I wish you could sing like him. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a bit high. He's a very good looking man. So, you know, you, you Thank you, you so that. much. I was you always a, a second rater. I was going to John. <laughs> For John Taylor and David Bowie, that's who I was modelling myself on, but I didn't quite, I didn't quite tick either box, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, of course you did. You and you gave us some great music as well. What was the premise okay. behind then Jericho back in the day? Uh, I wanted a band, um, really. Initially, the first band that I, I loved that I wanted to sound like was a Gang of Four. That's how we were modelling ourselves on. Um, and then a bit of a band called Shriek Back, who very few people have heard of, but I loved them. Um, and then obviously bands like Simple Minds were a huge influence, and David Bowie. But the idea was really to put together a, a band, a four-piece rock band, where we could play stadium rock um, in small venues, because we weren't that big, but to, um, uh, that had some, something that had some style to it. I was fed up with the way that all the rock bands just look all wore jeans. So I wanted someone where we had a bit of edge to us. So we looked a bit more like a, a, a you know, street fashion band, but actually played rock music and had some sort of socially aware lyrics, rather than being ostensibly political or pinning our colours on a particular mask. Our songs tend to be quite vocally outspoken but our feelings on society. Uh, yeah. So it was a kind of a punk ethic with ta- attached to like a, a, like a street fashion uh, et- I don't know, ethos, I suppose. Well, I guess at the time you had bands like Wet 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 who were the nice side of pop and, they, and yeah. they are, they're a bit of rock in there and a bit of jazz sometimes. Um, and they're about the same time. So would it, did you look at bands like that and go, actually, we don't want to be like that. We want to, have, we want to say what we want to say. We don't want to talk about love and stuff. We want to talk about the other stuff that no one's really talking about. Very much so, yeah. I mean, we were yeah. kind of forced to smile in various magazines. After a while, we, we, we weren't cracking it in the in, in the serious papers, yeah. getting a lot of backlash. Um, and so things like Smash It's came along, we had to sort of sit and do this. Yeah. And that, was a bit of like, that was kind of our downfall, really. But I didn't put our pictures, I did all the record sleeves, and I didn't put our pictures on the first two singles because I knew the minute people saw the way we looked, they'd pigeonhole us. Um, and I also did limited editions of the first two singles, and that didn't really help either. <laughs> the record company were like, what is, who is this guy? Um, <laughs> but um, finally, we, we, we cracked the music press and we got people like Sounds and Enemy and Melody Maker who finally said we're the last angry band in Britain. And we were angry because we weren't selling any records, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine because you weren't smiling. That's why. We weren't smiling. That's what it yes, was. smiling sells. <laughs> That's what he needs to it do. It does. And we were talking before we came on air that I love this little fact that you were the, were the first band to perform on Blue Peter. It, is that we true? were the first band to perform live. Love that. Peter, yeah. I absolutely yeah. love that story. That's brilliant. Well, no one did, about? you know. No, I mean, Karen Keating said to me, no one's ever played live. And should what? And I said, here's my new band, etc. And here's what I made earlier and held up a Ben Jericho sleeve. <laughs> 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 and I got a blue piece of badge. Yes. I was minted. You know, oh, that's fantastic. I mean, literally the, the 80s. I mean, we love the 80s. We absolutely bring them back. They were much happier times. Yeah, well, the other it. thing was that I loved it. And the good thing about Blue Peter, of course, was the fact it was Karen's uh, last show. So we got about 16 million viewers, which kind of helps. Oh, wow. 
the A's were great because there, there, there were quite a few opportunities to be on shows. We didn't have to have a deal so the tube put us on or we'd only just signed. Uh, mm. The Roxy put us on as well. There was loads of TV shows that would take a chance on people. It doesn't really happen now. Um, no. So once we got established ourselves as a visual band, that helped a lot. But we used to go and just knock on doors and get ourselves on any TV show we could get on, any radio show we could get on, because we knew yeah. that exposure was the key to our success. I mean, you couldn't get much much bigger than Blue Peter at the time. So, I mean, that you was really, really fantastic, really. That's, that's great fun. And here we are in 2022, uh, not in front of 16 million people on TV, but you will be at the Pizza Express live event in Birmingham. I'm not laughing, because I think it's lovely, actually. It's a lovely Thank idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing. Like, <laughs> not 16 million. <laughs> but that's a more intimate gig, isn't it? That's a much, in, in, as you get it mature is. with your music, maybe that's the way forward. Well, it's, they're acoustic shows, you see. Um, so the thing is that although I do still have Van Jericho as a four-piece rock band, and I'm playing some festivals later in the year, I'm doing um, a place on nothing called Northern Kin in, in, in Durham on the 30th of April, which is great, with bands like Delamitri uh, and Focus and Mark Chatterley from The Levelers. Um, mm. So I'm doing those sort of things. But for my acoustic shows that I've been doing for the last, well, since 1990, really, um, when they really came to the fore during lockdown, obviously a lot of people were doing acoustic acoustic lockdown things. Um, so I carry on doing what I've been doing the last few years because I love playing acoustic shows. And yeah. for those, I want like, I want small, intimate venues. I like to see people. If you play somewhere big with an acoustic show, it's hard to hold people's attention and they don't listen because obviously they're up and they're dancing around. They're not really listening. Uh, these shows, you can sit down, you can relax, you can get quietly slaughtered um, and listen to me wail. Um, wow, eating pizza. The, I mean, it's, it's it's much, pizza. it doesn't get better than that, surely. Well, precisely. And the beauty of it is, is that I mean, stand up if you want to, but... The nice thing about it is, is that they're very laid back venues, but they're jazz venues. So the, the acoustics are amazing. They're purposeful venues and the sound systems are phenomenal. And the sound engineers, I've got to yeah. say Sam, Samuel is the sound engineer that is amazing. Um, and all the staff are brilliant. Jack and Anna just great, lovely people. But the quality of the sound is what I go for. So you go you walk into a room and you hear the PA and think, that's outstanding. And if you hear something like that, you want to take your music there. So yeah. it's nice to take it me. And a lot of people are playing acoustic shows there now. So I'd like to think we were one of the, the sort of leaders of a of a little charge towards let, let's go and play let's because a lot of small venues are, are closing down and i'm very very into supporting small venues you can take yes. them to the big holes as british musicians we have the responsibility to support small venues i really believe that so with with the the set you're going to be doing it's, it's your own material as well as then jericho that's what we can expect yeah and some mark shaw that uh, etc and some then jericho mainly then jericho yeah. some of my own um my own stuff and a couple of covers I won't say what, but we all chuck a couple in because I love doing a cover. Yeah, I do enjoy it. Yeah, who, doesn't like a bit of, who doesn't like a bit of karaoke, Mark? Well, there, there may be a bit of Bowie, there may be a bit of Beatles. I always pick on oh. the, the easiest, the easiest songwriter artist to copy, you know. But it oh, just cool. it's nice to um to reinterpret. And the nicest thing about it, Matt, is that I get to re-explore my songs. We're playing acoustically, we use loops and various other things, but just two of us, myself and my brilliant guitarist called Ollie, Ollie Brunner. And all we do is we sit down, we kind of re-explore the songs. We might change the key, change the length of them. And I may even occasionally forget the words, but I normally try to stick to the originals. But no, we try to reinvent them. forget your words. It's okay. It's all right. It shows you humor. Well, does it? Is that what it is? It's not That's what it is, you see. Yeah. Bring it. I, I forget my words. I've got no script and I forget my words. Um, <laughs> was your, so this is this coming Saturday, the 5th of yeah, March. Yeah, Saturday, 5th of uh, March. In Birmingham. You can get tickets from um, pizzaexpresslive.com. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, UK. Sorry. pizzaexpresslive.co.uk. There's still a few left. You need to get that right. Otherwise, you'll yes, and that is a Brinkley's out. place. Pizza Express Live, Brinkley's place, Water's Edge in Birmingham. <laughs> it is, it's, it's just off board trip. Lovely venue, actually. It's very nice, right opposite the ICC. There, by the Great people as well. Fantastic stuff. I love, I love playing there. Well, the Brummies and the and the, uh, the Yam Yams, uh, they're a wonderful bunch of people and very talented as well. Who knew? There's so many great bands from, yeah. the, from, from, from especially from the back country, but Birmingham in particular. We know that, don't we? Led Zeppelin. And, oh, and Duran Jaren, you you've worked with um, with Andy Taylor, haven't you? I have that. indeed, mate. I worked with Andy Taylor. I worked with Roy Wood as well, which which is and Carl Wayne, which is fantastic from the move. But um, yeah, I worked with Andy. We um, he came along. I, I I made an album when I left the band called my first album called Almost. Um, and the record company weren't that happy with it, and Andy came in and mixed it for me. Ended up getting him to play guitar on a couple of tracks, uh, which is fantastic. And then he ended up saying, "Look, let's let's re-record." So we recorded some of it, and he ended up co-producing with me. And it was a big change working with someone who's actually in your band. He joined my band. He joined Jericho for a few years. It was great to have someone in the band actually producing because with me, I used to co-produce the records anyway when I was in the band, or a lot of them. Um, and it's nice to have somebody else who's also a musician in the band to get to, to work with, who yeah. he'd been a producer too. So, and of course, he's got tremendous knowledge and a hell of a lot of skill. 
And it does help the fact that he's an astonishing guitarist. That really helps as well. I know, just help a little bit, doesn't it? With that, so yeah. I mean, the amount of talent that we we pump out from this area and and that's affected the world. And people like yourself working alongside people like Duran Duran, who's still there now. And I'm seeing them live at Hyde Park later this year. And I, oh, yeah. cannot, wait, I cannot wait. They're brilliant. They're brilliant live band. Yeah. Phenomenal. Oh, a proper rock and roll band live. They are one of the best. I think there's not many bands like them left. I think you know yeah. there's. Not, well, they still really enjoy it. That's the key to it. Is they get the band thing going, but they do it because they want to do it, not because yeah, yeah. And they're getting uh, younger. I don't know how that works. But... That really annoys me. I know. I know. What is that? I don't you, know. You see the ball? I say Simon, what's going? On? <laughs> I tell you what. Um, Andy is also now in Reef in the band he's Reef. A... Oh, Andy's okay. In the band Reef. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's getting everywhere. Is this not enough? Can't for get you. Rid of him. But we no. also this, I, I did another album. We did an album called Gasmophobia. Uh, in the late eight, in the late nineties, and um, I got him in. We wrote about four songs for that as well. So we recorded that, or half of it, in Beckbury, uh, which is not far from from Wolverhampton, not far from Birmingham. Well, there so we go. I, I do have ties. I do That's have ties. Little fact you're throwing in there for good measure. I've got loads of friends up in Birmingham. You know, up in in the, uh, the, the you know in our area. I love it because I love the warmth of people. I love the creativity, but I love the humour. Absolutely, the and we're you know we're a lovely bunch of people, and uh, you can come round and have tea any time. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but before we come to before you come to our house, we've got to come to yours for pizza on Saturday. Pizza Express Live uh, this Saturday, fifth of March in Birmingham, just off um, Broad Street, Brindley Place, around there. Listen, thank you, Mark. It's been a pleasure. I can't tell you how many fans are out there of yours that have gone crazy that you've been on this thank afternoon. You. They've loved it. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for being on. It's great. We're going to play. We're going to play Big Area. Everyone's asking for that. Fond memories of this song for you, I imagine. Very much so, yeah. Uh, we played it live for about a year before we recorded it. The minute we wrote it, we knew it was something. Um, I, I played it live so many times. That by the time we got into the studio, I, I had forgotten what the words were, but I changed them a lot. Well, you but need no, to write them down that... for Saturday. That's what you need to do. I will do. On your piece One of paper. Thing, Listen. Say a very quick hello and a huge thanks. Quick, yes, go for a, it. A very, one of our, our massive fans, a very special lady called Jackie Lakin uh, and her lovely man, Andy Smith. They've been phenomenal to me. Um, and I want to say thank you because it was her that uh, put me in touch with you guys. So that's oh, no. thank it's you to all them. my fans. Thank you for us you're supporting me. I really appreciate it. And I, I love you. And I hope to see you Saturday. We're all going to come on Saturday. Thanks very much for being on, Mark. Have a great week and enjoy Saturday night. You're going to be great. Learn those lyrics. Thank you so much, mate. Got to thank love you, that. Mark. See you, mate. Mark. See you. Thank you.